Hello and welcome to Drugs Plus. Whether you're here for exam revision or just general interest, I hope you find this video useful. If you do, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for similar content coming soon. Today's video is part of my current series on therapies for type 2 diabetes and this particular video focuses on metformin, a biguanide. The reason I've named this video simply metformin is because although other biguanides do exist, for example buformin and fenformin, metformin is the only one that hasn't been withdrawn from the market due to toxicity. I'm going to start with a brief introduction about the disease itself. Islets of Langerhans are small patches of endocrine tissue in the human pancreas. They contain alpha cells, beta cells and delta cells, among others. When our gastrointestinal tracts are empty, usually periods above three hours after meals, alpha cells secrete glucagon. Glucagon acts in a wide range of tissues in the body, all with the aim of ensuring blood glucose concentration doesn't get too low. These effects include inhibiting glucose uptake by bodily tissues, as well as the breakdown of storage molecules to generate glucose. However, when glucose is being absorbed by the gastrointestinal tract, usually shortly after a meal, beta cells are stimulated to secrete insulin. As well as inhibiting the secretion of glucagon and therefore inhibiting all of its effects, insulin acts in a large variety of tissues, all working to reduce blood glucose concentration. These effects include increasing glucose uptake into tissues as well as increasing the production of storage molecules. As you can see, these two hormones have opposing effects and together produce blood glucose homeostasis. However, in type 2 diabetes, the insulin arm of this process is diminished. This can be caused by dysfunctional beta cells resulting in reduced insulin secretion or reduced insulin sensitivity in peripheral tissues or indeed both. However, metformin is used to enhance insulin action and it does so in three main ways. In normal physiology, histone deacetylases bind to the histones upon which DNA is associated, allowing the DNA to unwind so that a gene can be transcribed and translated. This includes genes for glucose 6-phosphate and Pepsi kinase, which are vital enzymes in gluconeogenesis, a process which increases blood glucose concentration, the opposite of what you want if you're a type 2 diabetic. However, metformin activates 5' adenosine monophosphate activated protein kinase, or AMPK. This enzyme inhibits the specific histone deacetylases which regulate these gluconeogenic genes. This means that they, these genes won't be transcribed or translated and gluconeogenesis will be inhibited, therefore reducing blood glucose concentrations. Additionally, in obesity, and let's remember that the majority of type 2 diabetics develop the condition as a direct result of obesity, an accumulation of fat in the liver results in the activation of protein kinase C epsilon, which inhibits the downstream signaling cascades of the insulin receptor. However, metformin again activates AMPK, which inhibits the acetyl-CoA carboxylase molecules on mitochondria, which reduces their ability to synthesize fatty acids, thus alleviating the suppression of insulin receptor signaling. And finally, AMPK also promotes the translocation of GLUT4 into skeletal muscle cells, reducing the blood glucose concentration even further. So overall, metformin reduces gluconeogenesis, it increases insulin action, and increases glucose uptake, thus treating the hyperglycemia caused by the type 2 diabetes. Metformin can, however, cause diarrhoea, but this usually goes away with prolonged treatment. The drug has also been associated with vitamin B12 deficiency, 
But all in all, metformin has very few weaknesses. Most notably, it doesn't produce weight gain, unlike most therapies for type 2 diabetes. For these reasons, metformin is the most commonly used pharmacological treatment for the condition. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it useful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I'll be back with more pharmacology videos soon.